In this video, I'm going to share with you the five steps that you need to take in order to get a clean green screen key. Clean green screen key. Say that 10 times fast. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus tip. Okay, at some point in your filmmaking career, you're going to be asked to key an image over something else with the use of a green screen. Whether you're shooting on a virtual set or you want to simply put yourself in an alternate reality, a green screen will help you make the magic happen. However, to get a clean key and make your shot look believable, you've got to pay attention to these five things. So let's dive in. One, use a flat chroma green surface and light it evenly. To get a clean key, the first thing you have to do is have an unblemished flat chroma green or digi green background. Digi green color is a little brighter and better for outdoors. Chroma green is a little darker and it's better for indoors. If you're painting a wall or seamless, Roscoe makes a special paint for this called Chroma Key Green Video Paint. If you're using a roll of chroma green paper, make sure your paper has no wrinkles or tears in it. Or if you're using a chroma green cloth, iron or steam it beforehand. And once you have that unblemished background, whatever it may be, light it from both sides with large diffused lighting so that there are no shadows or hot spots. Two, don't expose the green screen above 50% IRE on your waveform monitor. Ideally, you wanna capture only that chroma green color when it comes to your background, so it's easy to key out. How do you do this? One way is to look at your background in a waveform monitor and make sure it's not above 50% IRE. A waveform monitor measures the brightness values in your image. These values are measured in IRE. 100 IRE is extremely light, zero IRE is extremely dark. So you wanna see the green values under 50 or really around 40, and you want your subject to be over 50 IRE. Now, not everyone has an external waveform monitor sitting around, so if you're one of those people who doesn't, use the one in Adobe Premiere. Do this by shooting a quick clip of your green screen and bring it into Premiere. Go to the window menu and make sure there's a check mark by Lumetri Scopes. Then in the lower right, click on the wrench and make sure you have a check mark by Waveform RGB. And now you have a waveform monitor. Park your playhead on your green screen shot in your timeline and look at the waveform monitor. Is the green line above 50? Then go back to your camera and lower the exposure until it's around 40. Three, place your subject far from the background. You don't want your subject positioned too close to the background because if they are, they're likely going to cast a shadow on the green screen. And remember, you want to light it evenly, avoiding any shadows or hot spots. Four, light your subject according to the background you plan on using. First, you want to know what background you're going to use before you even start shooting. And then light your subject as if they were standing in that background. So, for example, if in your final composite your subject is going to be walking on the moon with the light hitting them on the left, light your subject from the left. Also, pay attention to how bright the light source is in that background and light your subject accordingly. You don't want to have a really bright subject in a dark environment because it won't be as convincing, and vice versa. 5. Key it in Premiere Lastly, here's how to do a quick green screen key in Adobe Premiere. Bring in your footage, put it in your timeline. Make sure Effects has a check mark by it under Window, and do a search for Ultra Key in the Effects palette. Drag the Ultra Key effect onto your green screen clip in your timeline, and in the Effect Controls palette, scroll down until you find your Ultra Key effect. And click on the eyedropper to the right of the words Key Color and drag the eyedropper over a portion of the green on your program tab. Try to select an area near your subject and let go of the mouse once you've found it. And you'll see the box turn green here. Then you can adjust the values below this until you get rid of all the green in your shot by doing the following. First, click on Output and select Alpha Channel. 
so that everything that's not the green screen is white, and the green screen or alpha channel is black. Ideally, you want to see either white or black in this view. No gray, like this. So adjust the values under matte generation accordingly. Then, under matte generation, you can adjust the values in matte cleanup, which cleans up the edges, getting rid of green between things like fingers and hair. So, to work in matte cleanup, flip your output back to composite so you can see your image on the background again. Choke will trim your matte back a hair, soften will feather the edge of your matte, and I don't really mess with anything else in here. Under cleanup is spill suppression, which you can use to get rid of any areas where your green screen is reflecting it back onto your subject by nudging these values up or down. And that's it! Now you're on the moon. Magic. All right, let's do that tip. Okay, this may seem obvious, but I've seen people forget. If you're planning on green screening a subject, make sure they're not wearing green. Because if you end up having a green tie, shirt, dress, or even earrings, things are gonna get weird. So if you're shooting a green screen shot, talk to wardrobe first, and make sure they steer clear of the green. All right, as always, if you found any of this to be helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted. And I will catch you next time.